Right, it is 2010, January, and I'm just um, carrying on with the um, cassette recordings that I did when I went to Suffolk for the first time in Cambridgeshire in 2005, uh, when Zara and I were searching for our ancestors and exploring various villages like Borough Green and Brinkley. This is cassette one, section three now. Um, and we are actually at Brinkley at this point in time. Now, the computer has, has been playing up several times. I've, this is the third attempt I've had at trying to record. So if there are some stops, apologies. It's the computer having a rest every now and again. Anyway, here we are at Brinkley. Mothers, um, Richard Thomas Hill, August the 11th, born, died 1880 something, and then some new ones, and there's lots of new ones in this corner, and then there's Lunard Joseph Corner Bailey, 1906 to 1992. There are lots of new ones. And there's one in a bush over here I'll just have a look at. No, I can't read it. Like you say, Mason might have been buried in the graveyard in New Market. Or Exon. He might have gone back to Exon. We've got loads to do over there yet. Thomas Grain uh, Grangers keep creeping up, don't they? James Jeffrey, who died January the 9th, 1862, age 64, and, and another one, James Jeffrey, who died December the 15th, 1872, age 71. So they could have been related cousins. Lots of unmarked graves, actually. We can't. We've been round. We can't see any of our lot, but some. Um, they might have gone back to where they were born or went to Newmarket at that time. Okay, <clears throat> I'm inside the church and there's a couple of monuments written on the inscriptions on walls. Like Patrick William King of Captain of Suffolk Regiment and Frosts, They're quite important in the community. They do bell ringing here, there's a font here. Um, yeah, quite a simple little church, really, not a lot of decoration. That's it, I'm just going to get a couple of postcards. <coughs> so John Frost, back in 18, what? 1826. In 1826 married um, Anne Oakley, related oh. to us. Oak, I mean, not Oakley, Oak. So they could be... And the Frost family seemed quite important and lived in the hall. There's a grave near the church of uh, Philip, two Philip Frosts. And there's that F. It's Philip as well. Yeah, one um, died in 1880, January. Aged... Um, not quite sure. There's also a memorial in the church of Charles Darwin and Kemp, somebody Kemp, I think he was um, a, a mathematician, bis uh, you know, that sort of thing. There's a Charles Darwin had been to this church in the past. It's got links with him as well. Oh, yeah. Right, we're just stopping off quickly at Western Colville to take up some pictures. We found a place called the Reading Room where one of our ancestors lived at one point. 
I don't know if it's somebody's house now. I don't know what it is. Um, just going to take a picture of it. Well, on the route past Western Coalville, we went up a road looking for trying to find the church, and we came across this driveway leading up to an old barn. It's just, you know, a couple hundred yards up from the village of Western Coalville. It's quite derelict. I'm just going to take a picture of it. Well, because we haven't managed to locate Western Colville's church yet, we haven't given up. It's just that we're going to have to come back another day and do waterless place. Um, Wesley Waterless. We're going to go to Dullingham now, and then we're going to Exon after that. But we, we've also got to do Wood Ditton and Stretchworth. I think we're going to leave them till we've even studied them a bit. We're going to do Dullingham and Exon now, and then we're going home for the night. It's just that we're going to have to come back another day and do water less place. The future playing up again. Um, Wesley Waterless. We're going to go to Dullingham now and then we're going to Exon after that. But we, we've also got to do Wood Ditton and Stretchworth. So I think we're going to leave them till we've even studied them a bit. We're going to do Dullingham and Exon now and then we're going home for the night. Oh, lost in Colville still. There's um, the old school house built in 1868. Um, possibly, I've just discovered some information. Thomas Oak, brother of Edward Oak, his son, I think he was called Robert. Was it Robert? Um, he lived here. Oh, that's all I can say at the moment, so I've forgotten. But we're going to, we're going to have a look around... Western Colville Church now. <laughs> oh yeah, it was Charles Oak, son of Thomas Oak, who um, was married a girl called Augusta, and they had several children. I've got it all written down. It's just to try and remember. Uh, we're not expecting to find many people in this churchyard, but there is a link here with... Uh, yeah, of course, since 2005, I've done an awful lot of um, research and I've got all this family tree of the Oaks, the Charles Oak, the Thomas Oak, Robert Oak. I've got them all on my family tree via Family Tree Maker and Ancestry.com. Uh, it's quite extensive. It goes into a lot of detail. So we've come a long way since those early days. Back to the cassette. Um, the cousin of, of Eleanor Oak. Her, her cousin was um, Charles. And oh, we found a Livermore in loving memory of um, Edward, somebody or other, died. Then uh, Martha Ann Livermore, his wife, she's the wife of Edward what? Oh, Edward Alfred something or other. A book called Edward yeah, Alfred. Who died February? No, Martha Ann Livermore died 24th of February 1909. Kemp. Oh yeah, Sidney Alfred Kemp Livermore died March the 27th 1876, age 18. Well, that's the first name I Edward Alfred Livermore, the husband of Martha Ann Livermore. Died 1893, um, age 49, and she died, um, not sure, age 40, I think, or something like that. We found some Livermores anyway, and it's just if there's anything on this, there's a great big broken up slab of something, it's just an erect thing. decipher what it is. There is a tomb with a cross on the top. Right on 
top of it. Yeah, this is like... So I was just rubbing her foot to try and see if we can see an inscription. Sometimes it's down on the side as well. Probably not it. Oh, need a trowel. It's probably under there. I can see the black markings. Yeah, a spray can, really, don't we? Yeah. Need a trowel, a little trowel. I told you we need a trowel because I got that experience from being in the other place. If we go do this bit and then go round there and work our way... Uh, we'll use this here. <laughs> so hard to see, these. who died November 1808, I think somebody did. But to see their name is almost impossible. Can't see their name. See, sometimes in certain light you can see. Because there's... There's a memory of a John Thomas Smith stone. Um, you'd have to pull off all the moss to see. Yeah, there's a Smith tomb. Okay, then Maria Chapman of, um, died in oh, 1976, quite recent. And um, her husband, Richard, who died 1931. In his 87th year then, because she lived a lot longer, didn't she? Somewhere, but not around here, I don't think. Thomas G. Burton. Yeah, he died in 1908. There's a big grave in this um, West Colville. It's called, um, surrounded by um, iron railings with spikes on them. It's a Charles Cracknell. Died the 12th of January, 1904, age 76, and... Also another Charles Crackner who died October the 30th, 1905, age 30. Two brothers. Oh no, 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 Charlotte died in 1904 and then her husband died after her. And then we've got Elisa Emma Radford who died April the 5th, 1913, age 56. And Samuel, her husband, who died November the 30th, 1932, age 77. Then we got one turned away. This could be a hood. It's been... Could have been a hood there. Oh, it's not very clear. just thrown about in here. This is... Uh, yeah. Yeah, we found a pile and they're just all stacked up. Piled up. With no... respect, really. Because they think everybody's dead. There could be one of ours in this lot. There's no way of finding out unless we took them all, broke them all up. Well, we're hoping we'll find somebody eventually. We're coming up to now, we're in this wooded area behind the church. We're coming up to, a, this is a very large, very large monument surrounded by black railings and a wall. And there's actually a hole in the ground that goes down. This must be the vaults. Because they're very deep. This is actually, I think, um, a vault. 
It's not very, you could easily fall down, it's very deep, and this goes underground. This is where the coffins are kept. There's a monument just on the top. I'm just trying to find out who it is. It's actually an underground tunnel at, at Western Colville here. What? Yeah, who is it? Yeah, God, there's a big, big vault under the ground here. Oh, hall, sorry. Yeah, hall, that's the boat that built the yeah. church, yeah, it's, um... Yeah, yeah, there's a big tomb here. Major Charles Hall, died 1883. This is the resting place of the Hall family, and they're all under the ground so that's here. that's for, so that if, when another one goes... Yeah, it looks like you go down... Yeah, it's actually like a... God, I've never seen this before. Like a catacomb. I don't know if there's any halls left, but this is where they're going to end up. Oh, I wouldn't fancy that. Would you? Oh, no. Well, you'd be joining... If it was... You are joining me, it wouldn't be so bad, would it? <laughs> They've got Thomas Loadsworth Barker, BA. He was a rector of this parish for 16 years. God, that is creepy. Yeah. God, where's my camera? I'd better take a picture of this one. Side halls, it all didn't all go under the ground. We've got Sarah, though no, James, who died 23rd of March 1888, aged 68, and his wife Sarah, who died October the 14th, 1907. But before we know, some of the Oak girls could have married into this family, so it would be worth looking into. Um... You know, that, that is a possibility, and there's lots of little stones sticking up. It's really nicely written out and everything, but it's lying flat. Yeah, Mary Barton died the 26th of January, 1892, age 80, and her, um, also Thomas, who died the 28th of January, 18. They died two days within each other, these two. Zara. Yeah. These two died within two days of each other. And there's a Richard Barton, he died 1809, no, 1895. They all died very close together, this family. There must have been a plague or something going on. Yeah. Hold on, wait for me, Zara. What about this? This the marble one. It's, just have a look at this one, you're going away. Oh, yeah, Margaret Taylor. There's one in the ground here. It's probably off the top, yeah, it's been laid flat. She's she trying to get away because she wants to find the first oak. No, wait a minute, let's just do, sorry, before you go on, let's just do this one. Oh, it's been turned the other... It's down, so that could be the one for a wait, Zara. This could be the one, it's facing the wrong way. Who's that one? M E me oh that could be there some that could be Sammy Anne is that Mason or no uh, Mead or I don't know oh it's not very clear anyway I just wonder why they don't bury people in all these empty spaces again. Everyone gets cremated these days. Oh, we're going to... It's, still quite, it's quite a big graveyard, actually. James Buffett. Yeah. What did, when did he die? 18... Could be... Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we could. You can't move them, they're rigid in the ground, aren't they? Yeah. Tin Tingy. Yeah. They've got codes on them, some of these smaller stones, haven't they? A and C or H. Yeah. They've got like a code. Yeah. Like, always Who are they? Chapman. Ellen Chapman. We found some Chapmans. Ellen Chapman. 
Gertrude Ellen Chapman. Loving. Something or other. Memories of. Is that Ellen Gertrude Chapman? Too cold. Let's have a look in this bush because you often get them growing in bushes. Uh, James Marsh. 1812, he died, he was 76 when he went, a couple of little stones around there, so if I lived up this, this way I would do this properly, hold on, Alice, beloved daughter of Hyde and Emma Heath, no I'd have to come and do some local ones, that we know, that we know. George Webb Slater, formerly of this parish, and Felix Stone, who died September 1921, age 80. Who have we got here? Is this another Webb? Slater Webb, yeah. Slater Webb. Another Slater. They all need stenders, the Slaters. Osborne. Ah, Osborne. George Osborne died May the 26th, 1917, aged 19, and Harry, fourth son of George Osborne, killed in action in France, 1918. There's, not, there's a few Osbournes around here. Yeah, because there's an Elizabeth of George Osborne who died May the 6th, 1899, aged 44. William Hall Palmer, they get everywhere, don't they? Elizabeth, Emily Elizabeth Swan, died 1960, age 69. These are recent ones. Uh, these are recent, 1959. Well, in between, yeah, because there's that back there. Nineteen forty-five. Who's this? Eliza, beloved wife of John Heath. That's a Heath. Eliza. Jesse Eliza. His wife. I don't know where he is on here though. He might. He's probably on the front. Oh, on the side. Oh, hold on. Loving memory. Remembrance of. Don't know without knocking it through. I don't know. Lots and lots of unmarked graves here. So uh, let's have a look. This one covered up, very mossy. I'm just going to climb in. George F. Dean. Killed in action, 1917. Also, there's big oak trees, and there's a big conker tree actually there, overlooking the graves. Big conker trees. We're just looking at all the new ones, there's not new ones. Somebody's got a rose bush. There's a hall there. At the hall, there's some old ones hiding in the bushes. John Borum died December the 17th, 1928, age 62. Another, oh, I've done that one. And there's one over here. I'm walking all over the place. Oh! I don't know who this is. Something's laying eggs there. Look, there's eggs here. Look. What sort of egg that is? And 
happy memory of Florence Eugenia Bell, who died the 14th of December, 1945, age 36. I think we ought to go over. There's lots of eggs. It could be pheasants. Sounds like it looks like a bell that you ring for. Elizabeth, Emily Elizabeth of Thomas New something or other. Where are we going? Back this way? They're all new. I've scanned those. Might be some older ones up here. It might seem a bit morbid what we're doing, but basically what it is, this is history we're doing. It's history here. These are all recent ones. Out with some of the new marbly stones, we've got a Daniel George Clark who departed this life on the 2nd of December 1952, age 73, and his wife Flora, who died the 1st of January 1957, age 81. There's some savages. Joshua George Balls. 1936 died, age 62. Oh, these are still new, aren't they? Oh, are they facing that way, the names? Another heath? Yep. God, I just can't believe we've got their relatives. Yeah, but like you said, these are just, um, this is just all without writing them, isn't it? Yeah, we're only looking for, like I said, the girls might have married and got different names. Ashman. Ashman. Barker. Tom, Thomas and Sarah, oh, who in it? The beloved daughter, um, Mahala, beloved daughter of Thomas and Sarah Cockerton, died November, no, born November the 23rd, 1828, died June the 21st, 1865. So it should be in the censuses when these Oki people were. Somebody's had a go at trying to dig that one out. I know this is near the end of this tape. I'm going to have to just go and get. Just right, we're at Dullingham now. I'm just going to start a new tape. Stephen. Oak and Anne Livermore got married at Dullingham Church, where we are now. And Stephen Oak and Eleanor Watson got married. And Stephen Oak and Eleanor Watson got married here. And all Willow. And Stephen Oak and Mary Brown got married here. And Stephen Oak. Right, that's the end of um, cassette one. It's taken three sections to get through so we've d gone from Burr Green to Brinkley to Western Colville and we just start in Dullingham um, and I know for a fact that the first visit to Dullingham the tape was a real mess so but anyway I've got about 50 cassette tapes to get through it's going to take me quite a while but it's all in pursuit of um, recording our discoveries when we visited Suffolk and Cambridgeshire because graves are disappearing at a rapid rate and when I've returned to Bar Green for example I found graves that were there in 2005 had gone by in 2008 so that permanent record has gone 
once those stones are removed and smashed up. Um, I think they are starting to renovate graveyards in some areas. I know they are in Weston. Um, trying to preserve them as opposed to smashing them up because they are a monument to people's lives and a very good record. Anyway, this is Sheila over and out. It's January 2010.